Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we're going to enjoy White Dwarf issue 475. Check out the rules inside, see what else is in here. Looks like we're going to definitely have some Caradron Overlord's rules. And let's check out what else. <laughs> All right, we have got Caradron Overlord's Rules Update Exclusive War Cry Campaign Massive 40k Warlords Battle Report, which I will not be covering. Um, Galactic War Hosts Heretic Zealots. Ooh. Uh, Fighter Aces and Aeronautica Imperialis and much more. Epic Fights and Bragging Rights. Do to do. Do to do. Do, 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 do. Ooh. What do we have? Sarah Wood has made a very colorful Seraphon model. Oh, look at that wet ground. Cool. Gene Stealer Colts at Atalin Jackals. Nice realistic color combinations. Ah, it's the Vulcan with a different head. That's definitely a different head from what was available. Uh, Junis Eruta. The hair was changed. Looks great. Look at that. Look how tidily that was done by Jim Whitehouse. Nice. Uh, Skaven Crawl Lord. Nice color combination. Nice bright symbol too. Ooh, look at those Necrons. Uh, Psychomancer and Royal Warden by... Wojcik? Wo Wo Sick. Sorry. Sorry about the butchering. Very nice looking metallics. Cool. T T T T. Oh, we'll look at that in a moment. Okay. We have got some Mary's purifiers. Underworld's group of Luminous, such a pretty color scheme. Colors are done so tidily. The shading and the highlights, very nice. This was done by Germain uh, Garcia. Wow. Really well done. This is Lieutenant Calcius by Thilo Engels. Nice. Very pretty blue. I like your highlights. Caradron Admiral Endron Master and Bird Master General by Santiri Sarkola. Look at those. Those look really good. What in the world is on his head? Where is his head? Eh? Cool. I'm gonna have to look at, up this model. Nice icing on those bases. Painting question, the Null Myriad. Ah, we got a color um, palette for uh, this color of Ossiarch Bone Reapers. Cool. Look at this guy. <gasps> Look at this guy. Skathak, Skathach? St Skathok. Wraith Knight by Christopher Stell. So pretty. Um, so 
pretty. I just recently watched the Eldari little video on Warhammer Plus about the Eldari and him searching for one of the soul stones. Ah. It's so nice. I like that one. Wow, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Okay, in the spotlight, Joseph Wilding's Forest of Stone. Wow, look at you. What are you? Elven vampire on mere merworm. Zombie dragon. What a cool model. Don't even recognize these pieces. Where is it from? I suppose it says all about what in the world was made, used to make all of this stuff. Is it? I don't know. It looks really cool. Look at these guys. I'll have to read about the creations. So nice. Look at you. Oh, so cool. So these elven wolf riders are supposed to be blood knights, and then the bar ghoul looking pretty. Ah, oh, what cool creations! These ones are supposed to be bat swarms, and they're undead crows, and a vampire lord, and this one's gonna be the zombie dragon. Ah, oh, I love it. So cool. So nice looking. All right, worlds of Warhammer. Worlds of Warhammer. Uh, delves into the background of the Age of Sigmar and the 41st millennium, looking at how stories are created and legends are born. This issue, we explore the relationship between the Space Marine chapters and the Grey Shields. If you want to know that, ooh, that's information. Oh, Terror John Overlord's word, that was fast. I was not expecting to scoot into Age of Sigmar this fast. Um, in this issue, Caradron updates War in the Blood Wind Spoil and a Warcry campaign. Look at this, Lord Sky Dwarfs. Ah, the Blood Wind Spoil. Hmm, okay. So, the eight, win, the eight points hang at the heart of the cosmos, a liminal sub-realm that offers passage uh, to the rest of reality during the Age of Chaos, explained by Archeon, and its lands transformed into hotbeds of corruption. Few are more twisted than the Bloodwind Spoil, to give some background on it. Heart of Darkness. Got some orcs there now. Landmarks of infamy. Lots of nice lore. Uh, Alright, so. From their empire amidst the clouds, the Caradron overlords descend upon the realms. These innovative and mercantile dwarden wield the power of incredible technology. Firearms capable of punching a hole through an ogre's breastbone and great sky vessels that carry the Caradron Onwards in pursuit of wealth and renown. I'm thinking if you want to feel like you're playing Warhammer 40,000 in Age of Sigmar, then you go with the Karajan Overlords. Because they like to shoot and deep strike. Some chat. Some chat about Karajan Overlords. All right, battle tomes. Ooh, and a new war scroll for the Arcanaut Admiral. Okay, so battle tome Caradron Overlord update uh, for open play, match play, and path to glory. Uh, the for and fortune and glory. 
So we've got an Arcanaut Admiral who is four inch movement, six wounds, three plus to save, eight bravery. He has a volley pistol of nine inches, three attacks, three plus to hit, four plus to wound, run minus one, two damage, and a scalp, scalp hammer of one inch range, three attacks, three plus to hit, two plus to wound, minus two rend, three damage each. Oof, nasty. Um. He says, if you want a job done, add one to hit rolls for attacks made by this unit that target a hero or monster. Cool. Uh, protect the Admiral before you allocate a wound or wound, wound or mortal wound to this unit, or instead of making a ward roll for a wound or mortal wound that would be allocated to this unit, if this unit is within three inches of any other Skyfarer's units, you can roll a dice on a one to two that wound or mortal wound is allocated to this model as normal on a Three plus that wound or wound, mortal wound is allocated to another friendly Skyfarer's unit within three inches of this unit instead and cannot be negated. Um, so uh, even better than uh, look out, sir. That might be the look out, sir. That that might be the forty k name on it, but you know the rule I'm talking about, right? Um, Master of the Skies. You can use this command ability at the start of your shooting phase. The command must be issued by this unit and must be received by a friendly sky vessel. That sky vessel can shoot in that phase even if it ran earlier. They did not need that. No. No. They didn't need that. Nasty old sky vessels. All right. Aether power munitions. After the player's have received their starting command points, but before parts to the start of your first turn, you can pick one of the following, either Aether Powered Munitions from this, for this unit to use during the battle. Uh, so, no, you can pick one of the following Aether Powered Munitions to use for the duration of the battle, which is uh, either Blaze Beard, uh, Blaze Beard and Sons Drake Hobbler Mag Bolus. Once per battle at the start of your shooting phase, pick one enemy monster within 12 inches of this unit and roll a dice. Okay, so you get to see whether your guys have monsters or not before you pick it out. Okay, on a two plus that unit is grappled until the end of your opponent's next turn. While an enemy is grappled, charge rolls made for that unit are made by rolling 1d6 instead of 2d6. How annoying. On a two plus, yuck. Once per battle, okay. Once per battle is not so bad. While it is grappled. And it is grappled until the end of your opponent's next turn. Okay. That's a, and once per battle at the start of your shooting phase. Cool. Alright. Uh, celestial Burst Grenade. Once per battle at the start of your shooting phase, pick one enemy unit within 12 inches of this unit and roll a dice on a 2+. plus. Ward rolls cannot be made for wounds and mortal wounds caused by attacks that target that unit until the end of the phase. Oh, well, that's all right for uh, going against ghosts. That's nice. Pick one enemy unit. Yep, that could help. All right, grudge breaker rounds. Once per battle at the start of your shooting phase, pick one friendly Caradron overlords. Unit wholly within 12 inches of this unit that is not a sky vessel until the end of that phase, improve the Ren characteristic of the unit's missile weapons by one. Yuck. The same unit cannot be picked to benefit from this ability more than once in the same phase. But it's once per battle. Alright. Nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Um, open play. Artisan twists. Carriage on Overlord's ruse. Uh, match play. They now have it special grand strategy, which is when the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy if no unit in your army has a share of Aether Gold that has not been spent, and at least one share of Aether Gold was spent by friendly units in every battle round. Okay, well, I'm not exactly certain how easy that is to pull off, but that doesn't seem so bad. Uh, battle tactics, uh, pick one enemy unit, you complete this battle tactic if that unit is destroyed during this turn by a friendly model using the bomb racks ability. Hmm, I see. Um, uh, mobilize the fleet, you cannot pick this battle tactic in the first battle round, pick three friendly units on the battlefield, you complete this battle tactic at the end of the turn if those units are all garrisoned within sky vessels. Well, that's 
would probably be pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah. Yep, that would be pretty easy to pull off. I have hazard guest um, boosts on the ground. Pick three friendly units garrisoned in sky vessels. You complete this battle tactic at the end of the turn if those units are all on the battlefield and wholly within enemy territory. Still not too difficult to put out. And you got some core battalions that you could choose. Um, Iron Sky Attack Squad, which uses two Arcanaut Frigate units and two Arcanaut Company units, up to a maximum three each. That gives you Magnificent when you, you get to extra enhancement. Do, 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 do. Or Swift, once per battle, one unit. Uh, you can use the At the Devil or Forward to Victory without a command point being spent. And then the Grunstock Escort is, is, is uh, Grunstock Gun Hauler units times two, and Grunstock Thunderous units times one, with the ability of a whole bunch of extra guys being added to that. And that gives you a free all out attack or unleash hell command. Okay. La 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 la, past the glory, information for the Caradron overloads. Fortune and glory. A Caradron weapon of great renown has been rediscovered, and its recovery would be most beneficial, not to mention profitable, to your Skyfleet. There's just one problem. It's lost in the eight points. How in the world has it been rediscovered, but it is lost? I'm confused. Do you and your Arcanauts have it, have what it takes to recover it? No, you don't. Ghosts are stealing it from you. Sylvanus are hiding it from you. You're not getting your hands on it. So it's a campaign for them. Oh, and you got some color schemes. Uh, battle ready, parade ready. Some colors. Ruse of Engagement. What is this? So, the Ruse of Engagement, curated by the Age of Sigmar Games developers, focuses on the creation, design, and evolution of the rules for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. This time, Sam Pearson, hello Sam, uh, joins us to talk about the studio campaign that he's running. So he's creating the focal point. He's adding house rules. Carcass dance is a lawless place, he says. He's getting players excited. And he is concluding what he's saying. Uh, war, war in Carcass dance campaign rules. You're sharing it if you wanted to play his campaign. And then we also have now the new Warcry campaign. Feel like adding some rules to your Warcry? Playing a campaign today? Oath of Ascension. Demonhood is the greatest status a mortal can aspire to. Okay. Or so the gods of chaos would have you believe. Now this wondrous boon has been offered to you. No strings attached. But do you and your warband have the skills and determination to claim it? Ah, with the Red Harvest fellows. So, in the Oath of Ascension, uh, the Oath of Ascension is a short series of four games designed to be played through over an evening by two players. Um, Warcry games you could easily play over. You could easily play four games and. An evening, no problem. Uh, both players will take control of Chaos Warbands and play through four games of Warcry to determine who has gained the favor of a powerful demonic entity. It has been heavily implied, if barely promised, that should they succeed in their tasks, one of their number will be granted immortality as a demon prince or princess, a potent agent of Chaos and the highest level of power a mortal born can hope to achieve. This is the ultimate prize for any slave to darkness. And while the risk of betrayal by the Whispering Patron is high, tja, the rewards are potent enough for many to believe it is worth the battle. And then we've got battle plan number one, battle plan number two, battle plan number three, and battle plan number four. Yeah, that sounds fun. I shall... Actually, yeah, let's do it. Uh, now, for glory points for Warhammer Underworlds, we've got glory points is our column all about Warhammer Underworlds, Harrow Deep. Curated by the Age of Sigmar Skirmish team, this column sheds light on the game, plus rules, tactics, and gameplays, but we heard that there's a bitter rivalry afoot in the team. Mm, 
Hi. Dave Saunders chats about invisible walls, open shuffle play, silent messen menace, uh, illusionary might. Ooh, Maze Breacher's deck. Cool. Okay. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war, and war is exactly what you'll find in this issue's flashpoint, which includes new background rules, fiction, and some heretical hobby inspiration. Ooh, nice. All right, Echoes from the Warp. Echoes from the Warp is a regular column about the rules, tactics, and ongoing development of Warhammer 40,000 presented by the team's games developers. This issue, Duncan Waugh? Wow. Returns to the subject of meaningful choice in war games. Okay. Duncan chats about various things. Oh, here's some questions. What enemies does the player want to the model destroy? What, besides shooting or fighting, is the model trying to do on the battlefield? How does that role sit within the context of the rest of the army? Things they have to decide. Oh, there's the Arcanaut Admiral's War Scroll. And Aeronautica stuff. Uh, the Axe of the Wardens. The galaxy is being torn asunder. New war zones exploding into life with ever increasing frequency. With the Nach, with the Nachmund gauntlet so hotly contested, Reboot Gilliman assembles a new fraternity to defend it. The Wardens of the Gauntlet. Kio. A loose fraternity of space marines hailing from a number of different chapters. They've been brought together by common cause to hold the Nachmund gauntlet against the alien mutant, the traitor, and the heretic. All right. Answering the call. Astropath call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Warden's of the Gauntlet. Some, some little story about what's going on. Warden's of the Gauntlet. Castellans of the Wrist, Sons of Phoenix, Wraithos. Look at all these chapters. Salamanders, Black Templars, Praetors of Orpheus, Iron Hands, Puritans and Disciples, a test of faith. Uh, Pur Puritanical warriors who dedicate themselves to their chosen god often find themselves empowered with righteous zeal and holy fervor. Yet with such conviction comes the knowledge that failure, should it ever occur, will be all the harder to bear. Over the next few pages, you will find rules for using your armies in the Nachman Flashpoint. These rules are part of an ongoing series of crusade rules that we've been publishing over the last few issues, but they can be used independently if desired. Over the page, you will find the requisitions and righteous weapon enhancements for these zealous fighters, plus a selection of righteous battle scars in the event that they cho their chosen desire, their chosen deity deserts them mid battle. Um, you'll also find a new non flashpoint restricted match play legal rules for uh, allying a chaos knight to a disciples of Bellicor force for some truly diabolical fun. <laughs> Oh, that does sound diabolically fun. Uh, righteous inspiration. When warriors are exposed to these significant events on the battlefield, their belief in their cause hardens. On the following pages, you will find rules for attaining the puritanical keyword and the associated benefits. This unit might also regain righteous. All right. I shall leave you with that. 
I want to see what this is all about. Servants of the Dark Master. What's more fearsome than an army led by Belakor? An army led by Belakor with the addition of a Chaos Knight. Here we present match play rules for fielding one alongside your Disciples of Belakor army. Ooh. House Corvex and the Disciples of Belakor. So the rules below will enable you to include a Chaos Knight from House Corvex. Um, the rules for which can be found in Codex Chaos Knights, alongside Disciple of Belacor, Army of Renown. The rules for which can be found in Warzone Karajan, Act 2, The Book of Fire. Uh, you can include a single super heavy auxiliary detachment that contains one, contains one House Corvax unit as part of the Disciples of Belacor Army of Renown. If you do so until the end of the battle, that House Corvax unit gains the Agent of Chaos and Disciples of Belacor keywords. The detachment will gain all the detachment abilities available to House Corvax uh, as listed in Codex Chaos Knights, even though uh, the super heavy auxiliary detachments do not normally gain any detachment abilities. This means this House Corvax unit will all still gain the Demonic Surge, Traitorous Ambition, and the Forged and Terror Household Bond, and you have access to all Chaos Knights, including Horse Corvex, Stratagems, Relics, and Warmer Traits. Neat! If you upgrade a House Corvex Disciples of Bellacor unit to have a favor of the Dark Gods, it must be Blessing of the Dark Master. Cool! That was a cool. Loyalty Part 2. In a, in, a in a Medicae bay aboard a starship bound for yet another embattled war zone, Major Hesper, Iron Air Major Hesper, must make a difficult decision. A mutation has been found within the ranks of his troopers, and it must be purged. But will the Red Emperor listen to his plea for salvation? Uh-oh. Uh, Flashpoint Her Heretic Zealots. Galactic Warhost is a series of modeling and painting articles focused on the factions and subfactions of the 31st millennia. Uh, light your tallow candles and carve eight pointed stars into your war gear because things are about to get heretical. Ooh, 50 Shades of Heresy. <laughs> Cute. That, however, is not Fifty Shades. You cheated. All right. Heretical. Ooh, cool. You got the. Oh, the last. The 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 thingy gate. What is it called again? I just read it yesterday. I don't know why I keep forgetting. Uh, this is for his word bearers army. Crown. Crown. That's right. Uh, renegade vehicles. Heretics will often paint blasphemous symbols on their vehicles. No, do they? It looks good. Look at the end results. I like the blood splattered hand. All that gunk. Cool. Corruptions. Uh, Castellan Robots by John Bell. My heretic robots, he says. Nice. Look at that rusting. Cool. I like. <laughs> what is it? It's like it, it's got uh, chaos little runes on him. Like that, alternate. Um, renegade Arcoflagellants. Well, not exactly surprised that the Arcoflagellants would turn into renegades. Oh, does this? That looks like um, it comes from uh, da 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 da. Uh, da, 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 da. It's not. Why am I sure? Is it? What well, unmade? Feels like it's some of these are from the unmade things. Yeah, that, that is definitely from Unmade. I recognize that body shape. Cool. They turned them into arcoflagellants. 
Uh, a Hellroot by Martin Cashmore. Looks good. I like the red with black. Very good looking. Blood Pact uh, by Israel Gunners. This is, I use the traitor guard from the Blackstone Fortress, uh, along with other things from the looks of it, to make dudes. Looks good. Looks good, 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 good. good. Uh, mausoleum Predator. What? <gasps> it's a Mausoleum Predator. Cool. Cute. I don't know why. But it's very cute. Word Bearer's Hell Brute. Looks good. Um, the Mausoleum Predator was by Josh Noy, and this Hellbrew was by Matt Hudson, and a Word Bearer Sorcerer. Look at that guy. He has not seen the sun for a bit. Seen too many years, perhaps. Word Bearer Sorcerer by Ashley Lowe. That looks great. Um, Sanction Cultists. Ah, he took, um, ba da 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 what are they called? Carvis, Corvus Cabal. And made them Sinch Cultists, which is very fitting. Very fitting. Uh, Dark Mechanicum Rust Dockers. Ah, uh, with, with, um, Night Hunt. Cool. Very cool. That was by Steve Barrett, and up there was Matt Seymour. Mmm! A Night Lord's Demon Prince by Rich Danzy. Looks good. Ah, oh, look, you took that, the head of the, of Vargul. Cool. That looks great. And the coloring, so nice. A Sons of Sick by Chris Peach. Very leathery. Nice little addition of color with the of the turquoise. Uh, a slanesh, cultist, and demonet. Pretty. I like the bluish colors on the demonets. A uh, blood packed by Chris Peach. Ah, oh, more of this. More of his blood pack stuff. Wow, you be creepy. So creepy. I like that guy. He looks cool. A tale of four warlords. In a galaxy sundered by eternity of battle, four mighty warlords have assembled their armies as their forces converge, blades are drawn, guns are loaded, and force fields are activated. The first shots are fired. The greatest battle of our time has begun. We got space marines. That's cool. Helm. We got Necrons. We got Sisters of Battle. Ooh, she's looking good. And we've got Orcs. Orcs, 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 Orcs. Uh, battle Report. Oh, can't say what's happening. All this time we've been watching the stuff come to life and the can't show it off i will check that out later okay brush tips oh brush tips by max Faley. brush tips is a painting column hosted by the studio's heavy metal team here they discuss all things paint related be it color schemes techniques inspiration or something they're painting for their own collections max chats about the golden demon competition so the History of Golden Demon, back in 1987, so the book that I saw um, was only two years of Golden Demon things. Neat. Uh, how to win a Golden Demon, pick the right miniature, keep it consistent, tell a story, keep it fun. Dee -dee 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 -dee. And that's it. 
So what do the judges actually look for? Oh, I guess anyone who wants to look through Golden Demon stuff should be reading uh, this. It's kind of pretty. It's really pretty. Uh, reading this story. Look at that. Pretty. Very nicely painted. I don't see much of a story involved. Nice rust effect on those doors too, though. Oh, cool. Now that's a story. Ah, oh, really nicely done. The molding that had to be done to make this look nice and even. Nice work. Against a griff. I like it. A griffin, actually. Cool, really pretty. I like that a well, lot. That's a nice story. Legends of the Skies. It takes incredible skill and a degree of bravado to become a fighter ace in the 41st millennium. Most pilots are lucky to survive a single aerial engagement, but those who survive the horrors of an entire campaign become fearsome fighters indeed. This article provides you with new ways to represent aces during campaign play, offering an alternative method to the one presented in supplements such as Aeronautica Imperialis Taros Air War. Over the following pages, you'll find new ways to gain experience and ace abilities, which can be tied to the in-game feats of each aircraft, as well as upgrades to create your own named custom aircraft. So, the Sky Crusade, Campaign Squadrons, Experienced Aces, Highly Experience, New Ace Abilities, Superior Commander, Accomplishments, Superior Hunter, Up Close and Personal, all sorts of stuff that I am not going to read through. Custom aircraft cards. Custom aircraft you can create to kill. Alright, Unlikely Companions, Legolas and Gimli. Uh, the Middle Earth team returns this issue to give us uh, to give us another tactical breakdown of two of the most beloved heroes from the world, from the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship's deadly duel of Elf and Dwarf Legolas Greenleaf and Gimli, son of Glowin. Who is better, Legolas or Gimli? I like them both. Uh, talks about the ch chats about their backgrounds. And I like them even better together. And has some really nicely painted guys. Side by side with a friend. In the Quest of the Ringbearer supplement, you'll find the breaking of the Fellowship Legendary Legion. This is ideal for anyone who wants to represent the Fellowship in their tragic battle at Amon Hen in a matched play setting. Mm. Epiphanies. Oh. Callum Davis, as the surprising, as the upriser, as the uprising on Anacletos claims more space marine r lives, Captain Nasium begins to suspect that other hidden forces may be working against them. Meanwhile, orator Sefex gains a new perspective on chapters traditions in part four of Heirs of Reason. Inside the studio, as we come to the end of the magazine, we take a look at the games. The studio staff have been playing and what models they have been painting. This issue, more news from the Carcass Dawn's campaign, plus devastating war machines, and some Eelf versus Eelf action. Ooh. Pretty. I like this grey stone that you have painted there. Um, the storm vault stuff. Hello. And the hobby bingo is continuing. People are continuing to paint stuff. Cool. Some crow boys and black templar. And a very savage looking work. Look at that face. 
Huh. What? Okay. Looks good. For a moment I thought he had black teeth, but he's not. He's got blood-covered teeth. What is going on with his backpack? Wow. Looks good. Ooh. Okay, this guy looks good. Lehman Russ. And this chariot. Very pale. Nice little. What's this? What is that? What is that? I don't recognize that. What's this terrain piece? What is it? I like the black done. Such a pretty red. But what is this piece? I don't know this piece offhand. I like it. Ah, uh, Warring Karkistans. Ooh. Hmm. Mm. What's that? What, what is this? What can I say? I like looking at terrain pieces. I like terrain pieces. Okay, what's up? Next issue, Head of Knights of Slanesh update. Cool. Next on sale the 20th of May. Nice. We'll be checking that out as well. Very cool. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you did and want to see other wargaming materials. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye! Stage one of the eye. Stage two. Stage one. Stage two.